1.4 goes over your graphs of functions. Um, you've looked at your coordinate plane in prior sections. Uh, we looked at your x-axis, your y-axis. Your x-axis is that horizontal axis. Your y-axis is that vertical axis. You're kind of going to use that with the stuff that we go over today. Um, we also looked at, in the section before this, domain and range. Your x values or your input, your domain, your independent values are all your x values. Your range, your, in, your dependent values, your output, those are all your y values. So if we look at the first example that we have, we're finding the domain, the range, and the values of f of negative 1 and f of 2. If we first start by looking at your domain, your domain is going to be those x values that are covered. So look at the x values from the graph that's given to you that are being covered. We're going from negative 1 to 4. If you look at the ordered pair at negative 1 for that x value of negative 1, it is a closed circle. So it includes that negative 1. So the lowest value is negative 1, but it includes it since it's a closed circle, so we'll put a bracket on that. The highest x value that's covered is the 4. The 4, however, has an open circle on it, so that 4 will get a parenthesis. So just like interval notation that we went over in the beginning of the year, we're still using that with these domain and ranges. From here, we're going to also identify your range. Your range are your y values that are being covered. So look at up and down on this graph. So your lowest value is at that negative 5. That negative 5 is going to get a bracket on it because it's a closed circle on that point or that ordered pair. The highest value that that line goes up to is at 4. And again, that 4 or that ordered pair of 2, 4 has a closed circle on it, so it includes that 4, so that 4 will also get a bracket on it. So that was just example A and example C from this, like the word or the wording that's up top here. So we found our domain, which are our x values that are being covered. We found our range, which are the y values that are being covered. Next, we have to find f of negative 1 and f of 2. So if we were to find f of negative 1, we're going to look for the ordered pair where x is negative 1. Wherever the y value is will be what f of negative 1 is. So that ordered pair of negative 1, negative 5 has the x value of negative 1. So that negative 5 is what f of negative 1 is equal to. So you're literally just pulling the y value out from that. Next, we find f of 2. So we're going to find the ordered pair that has 2 as our x. That would be the ordered pair of 2, 4. We pull the y value from that ordered pair, and that's what f of 2 is equal to. For our next examples, we're going to be looking at telling whether or not these graphs represent functions. If you remember from the section that we did before this, we have this vertical line test that we can use. So we can literally draw a vertical line anywhere throughout that coordinate plane and pull it all the way left to right throughout, and that vertical line should only cross the line that's drawn one time if it is a function. If it crosses more than once, it is not a function. So if we look at example A here, the one, the graph that's on the left, if we draw a vertical line anywhere on that coordinate plane, we see that that vertical line crosses up top and on the bottom. So because it crosses more than once, this one is not a function. However, if you look at example B, the graph on the right, if you draw the vertical line anywhere through that coordinate plane, you see that, bless you, it only intersects once, so that one is a function. For our next part, we're going to look at increasing, decreasing, and constant values. When you're looking at a coordinate plane with a function drawn on it for you, 
there are parts within that function that are increasing, decreasing, and sometimes you have a constant. You're increasing and you're decreasing parts and your constant. You're all looking at those x values for them. So if we look at this example here, we're told that from left to right, that line goes down. That's when it's decreasing. From left to right, if that line does not have any change and it's just a horizontal line, it's constant. And then from left to right, if that line's going up, that means that it's increasing. So it tells you that moving from left to right, this graph falls or decreases when x is equal to negative 2 to when x is equal to 0. Then it's constant from when x is equal to 0 to when x is equal to 2. And it rises or it increases from x is equal to 2 to x is equal to 4. So again, you're looking at your x values where these increases or decreases or constants are. If we look at some of these graphs that are given to us for A, look at the way that the line goes from left to right. From left to right, you are going to be increasing in this section here. So that goes from where to where. Well, this line goes to infinity, although you don't see the arrow on it. So from when x is equal to where to where, you're going from here to infinity or negative infinity. So when x is equal to negative infinity, this is really thick. Hold on one second. I'm going to change this. From negative infinity to zero, that's when it is rising or increasing. From left to right, again, you're looking at the increase that's happening from zero to infinity as well. Again, we're not looking at the y values, we're looking at the x values. So as this goes up, it goes to the right continuously to positive infinity. So this also increases from zero to positive infinity. So there's an increase both directions or both ways here as you look at it. For B, however, you have an increase on this side. You also have an increase on the right side. It's from, we're looking at this from left to right. So your increases happen from negative infinity up to the x value, which is negative 1 as well as from positive 1 to infinity, because it goes to the right. From here, we also have a decrease. Your decrease is, again, from left to right, the line's going down. So from, two, from negative 1 x value to positive 1 x value, we have a decrease. For C, with this one, you have an increase, a decrease, and a constant. Again, we're looking from left to right where that line goes up. So from left to right, your line goes up here. So your first thing that you can see is that you have an increase from negative infinity to zero. You also have a decrease from two to positive infinity. And you have a constant where it's horizontal or stays the same from 0 to 2. For our next part, we're going to look be looking at maximum and minimum values. These happen where those curves are 
on your graphs that are drawn for you. So your relative minimum are gonna be those low points in those curves. Your maximum is gonna be those high points in your curves, and those are gonna be your Y values. So maximum and minimum come from your Y values, your increase, decrease come from your X values. Okay, so again, your, your relative maximum and minimum come from that curve part. So the Y value from those lowest points are your, max, your minimum, and the curve part are going to be your y values from the highest the, for your maximum. We're going to look at sketching a piecewise function next. So with these, you're going to see these as two different things. You're going to see them as sketching the graph of the piecewise function. You're also going to see simplifying for f of a number given the, the piecewise function. We're going to graph this first, then we're going to do some extra examples that aren't in your notes that deal with simplifying these. So if we look at sketching this, you have the piecewise function f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 when x is less than or equal to 1, and negative x plus 4 when x is greater than 1. So you'll see here that you have two functions or two lines that are going to go on to one coordinate plane. Your whole idea with these is that for your x values, you should cover every x value from the lowest point of your coordinate plane to the highest point of your coordinate plane, dealing with, again, those x values. So with the first one, the top one, we're going to look at that one. It tells you that x is less than or equal to 1. We learned from the beginning of the year, I think it was like one of the first lessons that we did, that when you have a less than or equal sign or a greater than or equal sign, whenever the line is there, that that means that there's going to be a closed circle on that number, on the number line. You're going to use the same concept with these piecewise functions. So because the inequality deals with the 1 and it's also equal to, that's going to be the ordered pair 1 comma something, and it's going to have a closed circle on it. However, if you look at the one underneath it, it's just x is equal to, or sorry, x is greater than one. So because this is not also equal to, that means you'll have an open circle on the ordered pair of one comma something. Either way, you're going to use the number in the inequality. So it doesn't matter that if it's not equal to, you're still going to use that number. So if, again, if we work with the one on the top, we're going to have, we're, we're going to, do a function table. So we're going to work with x values. We're going to have 2x plus 3. We're going to find y values. So our x values have to make the inequality that's with that function true. So x is less than or equal to 1. We're going to start with the 1 and pick numbers that are less than or equal to 1. So that's going to be 0, negative 1, and negative 2 at least four numbers should suffice with these. So we're going to plug these in. We'll have 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 3 gives us 5. So that's going to be a closed circle on the ordered pair 1, 5. I put the closed circle there so that way I remind myself when I go to graph it, it's definitely going to be a closed circle. Then I plug the 0 in. We get 2 times 0 plus 3, which is 0 plus 3, and that's 3. Then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1, then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. So we're going to start with the ordered pair 1, 5. 1, 5 is here, so we put a closed circle, nice big closed circle on that ordered pair. Then we have 0, 3, one, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, negative 1. You can keep going through this coordinate plane. However, you should realize that as you're going to the left, you're going down. So if you want to just draw the rest of your line through those ordered pairs, you can do that. From here, we still have that other function that we need to find values for. So that other function gives us negative x plus 4. We have to plug in values for x that are greater than 1 but we're also going to use that 1. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we plug the 1 in, that's negative 1, sorry, 
negative 1, not the opposite of negative 1, plus 4, which is 3. We said that that one is going to have an open circle on it. So when we plot that point, we make sure that it's an open circle. From here, we have the opposite of 2, which is negative 2, plus 4 is 2. Then the opposite of 3 plus 4 is 1. Then the opposite of 4 plus 4 is 0. So on our coordinate plane, we're going to put an open circle at 1, 3. 1, 3 is here, so that's going to be an open circle. Then we have 2, 2, 3, 1, and 4, 0. So with this one, we're going to go down and to the right. So our line will look similar to this. So you'll see here with our x values from left to right, every single x value is going to be covered on that coordinate plane. If that line continues to go down and to the left, it's going to go to negative infinity and cover all of those x values to negative infinity. If it continues to go to the right, it's going to go down to positive infinity with those x values that it's covering. Another way you're going to see this is to simplify. When you are simplifying, you're going to be given something like find f of negative 6. You have to plug that negative 6 in for each of those inequalities. Whichever inequality gives you a true statement when you give the, or put that negative 6 in, you are going to use the expression that goes with it and plug that negative 6 into that expression. So if you look... Negative 6 is less than or equal to 1. Negative 6 is greater than 1. Which of these is a true statement? The top one. So we're going to plug this negative 6 into 2x plus 3. If we plug the negative 6 in, we're going to get 2 times negative 6 plus 3. That gives us negative 12 plus 3, which means f of negative 6 is equal to negative 9. So this is another way you can, you're going to be able to see it. If you also have something like f of 1 half, that 1 half is less than the 1. So we, again, we would use the 2x plus 3. So that's going to give us something like 2 times 1 half plus 3. 2 times 1 half is 2 over 2, which is just 1 plus 3. So f of 1 half is 4. If we also use something like f of 9, f of 9, 9 is greater than 1, so you'll use the opposite of x plus 4. That means you're going to have the opposite of 9, which is negative 9, plus 4. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. So f of 9 is equal to to negative 5. The last one in this lesson goes over odd and even functions. When you work with these odd and even functions, I want you to plug in 2 and negative 2 to the 1 expression. You're going to simplify this two times, one with the 2 in, one with the negative 2 in. If your answers from those, when they're simplified, are the same number, the exact same number, same sign, they are even. If your answers are opposites, so same number, different signs, they're odd. And if your answers are two totally different numbers, it is neither. So if we look at your last example, it gives you a is equal to g of x is, oh, sorry, a is g of x is equal to x cubed minus x. If we first find g of 2, that means we're going to have 2 cubed minus 2. The 2 cubed is 8 minus 2 gives us g of 2 is equal to 6. From here, if we also find g of negative 2, that's going to be negative 2 cubed minus negative 2. The negative 2 cubed is negative 8 minus a negative 2 turns into plus 2. That gives us g of negative 2 is equal to negative 6. So if we compare these two, the g of 2 is equal to 6, the g of negative 2 is equal to negative 6. 
These two numbers are opposites. So they are this or this function is an odd function. For example, b, you have h of x is equal to x squared plus 1. So again, we're going to find h of 2 and h of negative 2. So first we find h of 2. That's going to give us 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 gives us h of 2 is equal to 5. Next, we're going to find h of negative 2. That's going to give us negative 2 squared plus 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So h of 2 is equal to 5. h of negative 2 is also equal to 5. When you compare these two numbers, what do you realize about them? They are the same. And then for your last example, C, you have f of x is equal to x cubed minus 1. So you're going to find f of 2. That's going to be 2 cubed minus 1. Your 2 cubed is 8. Minus 1 gives us f of 2 is equal to 7. Then find f of negative 2. So that's negative 2 cubed minus 1. That's going to be negative 8 minus 1, which gives you f of 2 is equal to negative 9. <coughs> if you compare these, f of 2 is equal to 7. f of negative 2 is equal to negative 9. These two numbers are totally different. So since they're totally different, they are neither, or it is neither.